Welcome back to Mycology Exploration. In this video, I'm going to cover how to grow mushrooms at home from start to finish. It's going to be informative and you have choices. There's actually a lot of choices and I want to go over all those choices with you. So let's dive deep. And growing mushrooms from home from start to finish, it doesn't matter if it's gourmet or medicinal, the type of mushroom doesn't matter. When it comes to the type of mushroom, you might have to tweak a few things, but this can be used for all types of mushrooms. So let's dive deep and I wanna start with, we actually used a grow kit at the very beginning when we were experimenting and learning. And I really got a kick out of the very first the very first item on the instructions, it says every mushroom enthusiast should have rubbing alcohol along with gloves and paper towels. And I agree. I cannot tell you how beneficial paper towels are to growing mushrooms at home. Everything needs to be sterile and clean. And we actually have never even invested in the fancy ventilation systems. We have always used this one still air box in SAB, and we have a video on how to create this. So everything we do is inside this SAB still air box, for the most part, for the most part. And I'm constantly spraying everything with alcohol, 91% alcohol. Many of you have brought up the question about 70% versus the 91%. And if you feel like 70% is better, then use 70%. If you feel like the 91% is better, like we do, you can always add water if you need to. And the spray bottle makes it really easy. And then I also recommend a mister bottle for the fruiting process for your water. So this is alcohol for the sterilization process. I use it in every single step. I go through so much alcohol. So I agree with this number one <laughs> in the instructions. Realization, keeping things clean is important. And gloves, we do use gloves. We do use gloves inside the still air box as well. So I recommend when you put your gloves on and as you're going in and out of your still air box, spray it, spray it, spray it. And we're gonna, we're gonna cover sterilization as we go, as we go, because it's really, again, so important when growing mushrooms, especially from home. When you first get started growing mushrooms, you have a choice. You can start with spores or you can start with mycelium. And we use mycelium. So I created a video for you talking about spores versus mycelium. And if you need to go into detail about that, just hit up that video that I created for you because I really dive deep into this thought behind growing your spores, germinating your spores into mycelium and just working with mycelium and not spores. When you get started, whether you're working with spores or mycelium, you're gonna need grain to colonize. So if it's just spores that you're working with, then there is a process of germination where your spores germinate into this mycelium. And that is a lengthy process. Spores, it takes a while. When we used this grow kit, we used spores. <laughs> we used spores. And it came with this grain bag. And let me just say, it took what seemed like forever. So what we did was we put, we had spores and a syringe of all the mushrooms we wanted to grow. And we had all these bags and there was a port and the kits to inoculate the grain with the spores. And again, it took a really long time. And a lot of times your grain will dry out. And then you move to after it colonizes and it's all white in your bag or your jar, then you move it to substrate or your soil to colonize again. So think about that. 
when you're starting out, if you're using spores, whether it's going to a bag like this in a kit, or it's going to a grain jar or WBS, when it spores, you're going to have to allow for the spores to become mycelium. Then the mycelium will colonize like this. After it colonizes, whether it's in a jar of bird seed or grain, this is called a WBS jar, wild bird seed, or a bag, it doesn't matter, it's the same. It's colonizing. When it's all white, and what you really want is this rhizomorphic growth. Tomatose is fluffy, rhizomorphic is more antler and branch-like. A lot of people will get confused on tomatose and think that it's mold. The rhizomorphic, you can see it's more branch-like and antler. So once it's colonized, and it's completely thick white, whether again, it's in a jar, a bag, bird seed or grain, doesn't matter, whatever you choose, it's your choice. When it's fully colonized, then you're gonna move it to substrate. Substrate is soil. So what we do is we create a 50-50 blend for the majority of our mushrooms, meaning 50% cocoa brick or a block, and 50% vermiculite. And then a lot of times we'll use a vermiculite casing layer. And I wanted to show you the pillowcase. I know this sounds crazy, but pillowcase is really needed along with a pot or crock pots for creating your substrate or your soil. And so what we do is we create a pot of substrate, 50 cocoa, 50 vermiculite, and then we put that on the stove and you bring it to pasteurization, which is 140 degrees, and you don't wanna cook it, so you're gonna add water to your pot, and I have a video on how to create substrate. It's very easy. But our number one tip is to use a, a pillowcase to strain out the water. So after you've created your substrate on the stovetop or a crock pot, you're gonna pour it into a pillowcase, and we use a five gallon bucket and a pillowcase and we just dump the substrate that has all this extra water from the pot, dump it into the pillowcase, and then we strain it out and squeeze it, squeeze it. We have two mycology pillowcases that stay sanitary and clean. And your substrate is gonna be pasteurized before you pour it into the pillowcase. Once you've strained it through your pillowcase, then you just add it to whatever you're going to use to fruit. So if you're using jars, you're going to break up your jars. And what we do is just simply open the tops and I put in a sterile knife, a clean knife, and I kind of break it up and go around the sides and dump it. And it's called birthing. You're going to birth your colonized jars when they're completely full white. This one is not finished, as you can see. When it's super white and dense with mycelium colonized, then you're gonna put it to your substrate. And then that's gonna colonize and turn white, you'll see. Then you have fruiting conditions. We use tubs. We grow all of our mushrooms in tubs that have tops and they have air exchange in them. And that's a totally different topic because you have choices on how you want to fruit your mushrooms. A lot of people will fruit their oyster mushrooms in bags right on the countertop. We use, again, tubs for all of them that have tops with air exchange. So if you're not growing in bulk, and you're not growing a lot and you want to spread out your risk because you're getting started, start with small grain jars like this. That's what we did. So I think four of these small jars equal one of these. We recommend that you mod the tops for air exchange and syringe portholes on your WBS. And then we just get these syringes. 
We buy them on Amazon in bulk. And we don't clean them. We just dispose of them in between each use. Everything needs to be stay sterile and clean. And these are a great price point. It's fine. We don't even try to reclean them. We just toss them after every use. When you're going from your grain to your substrate, I pulled out the grow kit because it was reminding me now, I made a cheat sheet. <laughs> I made a cheat sheet at one point about how much we put to what. And it talks about here about breaking your grain spawn into individual grains and mixing the grain spawn into your substrate evenly. This is true. And I wanted to show you this in print that you can see that it's not my opinion. <laughs> it's actually common knowledge of how much you're going to put together grain to substrate. This is probably a really big question that a lot of people, until you really experiment with it, you don't know how much grain to substrate. So how much grain do you put in your substrate once it's colonized? And here it says 20 to 30% of grain spawn compared to the weight of substrate. So in this kit, they sent five pound substrate. So it would require one to one and a half pounds of grain. So here's what we did. We just went on the 30%. So for us, we put 30% grain to substrate. 30% grain. So the way that we have, we've done the mathematics for ourselves. This is another reason why we use tubs because we can keep it really consistent. So I know that four of these jars go to one tub of our substrate. And I know that one cocoa brick makes two tubs of substrate for us. So I don't want to get into the mathematics. There's a lot of people that talk about the weight and the exact measurement of everything, we eyeball things. So we have just come up with our own calculations and we've done it so many times, it works for us. Again, the rule is 30% grain to substrate. And now I'm ready to birth. So I open the top of these jars, I put a, a sterile knife in there, I break it up and then I get it out. And what I do with gloves on my hand is break it all up. I break up all the grain and I mix it with all the substrate to where it's this perfect mix and I'm using gloves. And then I make sure that my tub has this nice level layer to it. And I put the top to the tub on, the original top it comes with for it to colonize. Put the top on, it colonizes. Once it's all colonized in the tub, it's ready to fruit. We take off the top and we put the fruiting top on, which has air exchange. And then we're ready to go. And we missed that top. Let me know your questions. Let me know what you want to know about next. Much love, friends.